In this module, we will talk about high-performance networking technologies. We will cover the technologies designed for the low latency, high bandwidth communication for AI, RDMA, InfiniBand, Raki, Raki V2, I will explain, iWerb, Ultra Ethernet and UAC, uh, Ultra Ethernet Consortium, uh, I will be explaining as a first topics. And then uh, we will move to the compute accelerators and interconnect technologies. So we will discuss their NVIDIA's NVLink and NVSwitch, how they work, we will see. And I will also explain NVMe over fabric technology that is uh, these days very popular. After that, I will start explaining, explaining the congestion control protocols. Okay, there are many of them. I will cover them in two categories, layer two and layer three based congestion control. Layer three based also we call it end to end congestion control and traffic management technologies. Okay, in layer two, the CB suites of technology we say is, they are like a PFC, uh, priority flow control, ETS, QCN, and DCBX, I will explain, okay? These are so important, guys. These days very heavily used in the AI networks. After that, layer three technologies will be our topics. Basically, ECN, which is the most common one, and then after that, DCQCN, which is based on PFC and ECN also, right? Both layer two and layer three. And then delay-based protocols like uh, Timely, I will explain. And then last but not least, I will cover HPCC, which is a relatively newer one, high precision congestion control protocol, we call it HPCC. We will understand their differences between them and their uh, traditional equivalent technologies, okay? So in this module. Let's start with the RDMA first. RDMA is remote direct memory access. This technology allows one computer to access the memory of another computer directly, okay? Without CPU involvement. That is the critical part. So, without involving the operating system or CPU of either machine, we bypass the CPU. Bypassing the CPU gives us much faster communication, of course. Okay, that's the idea. Think of it like sending message directly to your friend's phone without any involvement in the middleman, etc. Okay, directly, without CPU, without operating system, of course, much, much faster. This makes data transfer extremely fast and efficient. RDM is very, very heavily used, of course, in the AI. Normally, when data is sent over the network, of course, CPU has to spend some time and manage, managing the old process, uh, the data transfer process, a lot of time it can consume. It checks whether, uh, where is the data, uh, and it moves it to the, I mean, data to the right location and then send it over the network. So lots of basically parts involved. Uh, this might type, take a lot of time, processing power and so on and so forth. But with RDMA, data skips the CPU and goes directly to memory of the other computer. So extremely fast. So this reduces the delay or we call it delays equivalent is latency. Okay, when I say delay, it's uh, latency. And uh, if, this is uh, reducing the delay, uh, also giving the CPU to handle other important tasks, other background tasks, we call it, right? RDMA is especially useful in environments where speed is critical, okay? Like data centers, AI, of course, like our topic is AI. So it is for, for that. Still, of course, TCP IP based transport is uh, heavily used, of course, today, much, much more. But when it's RDMA, uh, when it's AI, I mean, RDMA is the critical technology and people use it, of course. For example, in AI training, large amounts of data needs to be shared, of course, between the GPUs or TPUs very quickly. We will talk about GPUs, TPUs, uh, why Google is using TPU, how it's much faster and all those things later. But uh, just we need to understand right now, in AI training, uh, a lot of data during the synchronization, etc., between the GPUs and TPUs are exchanged. And of course, there RDMA also we are using. Another benefit of RDMA, by the way, is it reduces the amount of work CPU has, has to do, right? CPU can uh, involve other tasks, but bypassing the CPU, uh, RDMA saves energy and improves the overall performance of the system. So it saves the energy because CPU doesn't involve extra. Otherwise, CPU also will consume the energy, okay? RDMA is, by the way, very heavily, very commonly used together with the InfiniBand and Raki, which are designed to support RDMA in specific type of networks. We will explain those in detail in this module, by the way. 
Raki, Raki V2, and so on and so forth. We will talk about them also. So right now, just let's understand RDMA is together used with the uh, InfiniBand, which is the older one. And then later on, uh, Raki came and then Raki V2 came. They are together used, okay? So RDMA is very key building block for creating fast, reliable, efficient network for the AI guys. So that's the idea. Very fast, reliable, and efficient, power efficiency, and so on and so forth, because we don't involve CPU, operating system, kernel, and so on and so forth. So what we talked so far, let me summarize. RDMA, we are talking in this video, right? It enables memory to memory data transfer between the two systems without any operating system or CPU involvement. It basically does this through RDMA enabled network interface cards, RDMA NICs, okay? This specialized network interface cards, by the way, handle data transfer directly, so CPU doesn't involve because of this uh, RDMA NICs. The result, as I told you a couple times so far, faster data transfer with less latency and hopefully jitter as well. We don't uh, have jitter there. So in the context of AI, RDM is really good because AI workloads, AI uh, jobs, it requires parallel computation. What is this parallel computation, serialized, serial computation, etc. we will discuss, but this, uh, especially when it comes to parallelism, GPUs, TPUs, or even DPUs involved, and we will discuss them as well. So RDMA is uh, good for those parallel computation, okay? These nodes, by the way, need to exchange data, and uh, like neural uh, network parameters during training and RDMA, RDMA help for all those data exchange, okay? So when it comes to uh, neural network, as I told you, which is the, of course, deep, deep learning uh, part of it, it's critical when we work with like a large models like GPT or deep learning architecture, we use RDMA there. It works, RDMA works best, very best, when we use with the high performance networking infrastructure like InfiniBand or Raki, as I told you. So when you see basically InfiniBand, Raki, Raki V2 type of transport uh, underlay, let's say, the overlay on top of it, most probably we are uh, talking about RDMA, okay, for the AI network. So these networking protocols really provide ultra low latency. That is the whole uh, idea, low latency. We just send uh, information from one GPU to another GPU between their memories. So that's why these networking protocols, we say they provide ultra low latency and high bandwidth uh, and basically to function the RDMA to uh, properly, we need very ultra low latency. For example, in AI data center, if we use InfiniBand, RDMA make sure that GPU or TPU can share data at the speed like uh, even more than 100 gig with the latencies in the like microsecond range. That is the important part. So RDMA, with, uh, if you provide uh, low latency also underlay with the, as I told you, we will discuss them, InfiniBand, Rocky, etc. Uh, can give the best possible outcome. Okay. RDMA can also work in Ethernet based networks, but uh, not classical Ethernet. Raki, as we will discuss later on, what is that? RDMA over Ethernet, RDMA over Converge Ethernet. We will discuss that, which is RDMA over Converge Ethernet, R R Raki when you hear. This is different than classical Ethernet and it is different than Ultra Ethernet also. Later on, I will discuss that one as well. One of the most critical and highly debated protocols in AI networking uh, at the moment, by the way, is Raki, and why you will see that one uh, in detail, we will talk about it. RDMA is really powerful, but of course, like in any other networking technology, it comes with some challenges as well. Let's talk about them a little bit. Okay. What are those challenges? For example, RDMA requires hardware, uh, like um, special hardware, like uh, RNIX, right? RDMA based NICs, and these are high performance interconnects uh, also required. So RDMA, not just NICs, but uh, also high performance uh, connectivities, such as InfiniBand and Raki, as I told you. And this at, of course, extra uh, cost. So that's why uh, these networks are maybe building that one is costly. Uh, and another challenge maybe is also congestion management. Okay, we will discuss congestion management. We have complete separate uh, part of this module basically for that one and probably more than one video, maybe two videos uh, we will uh, 
talk about just congestion management protocols like like layer two congestion layer three congestion based protocols and so on and so forth when we discuss rdma and especially when it involves also infiniband and raki we need to discuss what are those congestion protocols like credit based protocols without credit how it can be done and so on and so forth in internet based rdma implementation like raki as i told you managing congestion becomes even more critical because classical Ethernet doesn't come with the uh, uh, default congestion. So on top of that, we are running many things uh, to make it, you know, a uh, lossless network. And as I told you, we will talk about that. So congestion, because uh, if you don't manage it well, it can lead to packet loss, which RDMA is not designed to handle effectively, of course. We will talk about protocols like ECN, explicit congestion notification, DCQCN, uh, this is data center quantized congestion notification. And we will talk about PHC, pro uh, priority flow control. Uh, we use those protocols together with the RDMA to mitigate these issues, the congestion issues, due to congestion, uh, packet loss, possible packet loss issues. Last but not least, guys, setting up RDMA, one of those challenges in large scale network, especially in distributed AI training clusters can be really complex. So we need to make sure all the devices are RDMA capable and correctly configured to support ECN thresholds and many, many parameters. That's why it can be really complex, okay? So as the last topic of this video, by the way, let me explain, let's little bit discuss RDMA versus traditional networking in AI. Okay, let's traditional TCP IP based networking I'm talking, it introduces significant overhead. Uh, why? Because there are multiple layers of networking stack when we talk about TCP IP. And these are like checksums, retransmissions, CPU involvement, and all, all, all of those, like packet handling as well. These are uh, extra overhead. RDMA eliminates this overhead by bypassing the kernel and CPU and directly accessing the memory, I told you before. So TCP IP on top of that CPU, kernel, operating system, many things involved. That's why uh, RDMA also from those uh, overhead point of view, uh, much, much basically uh, efficient, we can say. In AI workloads, in AI tasks, AI job, I will use them interchangeably. This brings us significantly faster training times and reduce power consumption. Power is so important as we will see also later on. Why? Because we are going to talk about like, especially when it comes to AI training, tens of thousands of maybe uh, GPUs or even TPUs. These are really power hungry devices, especially GPU, right? Compared to CPU, very, very power hungry devices. So uh, in uh, when we eliminate those extra overheads, without because we don't use tcp ip but we use rdma basically we eliminate this overhead that's why we can uh, do the faster training as well as reduce the power consumption so if i told you the last word about that rdma is really fundamental technology for high performance ai networking it is the unavoidable and uh, currently only let's say a technology that gives us uh, whatever we really want and its ability to bypass traditional bottleneck and deliver low latency, high bandwidth communication really makes it excellent choice for the modern uh, AI jobs, AI tasks, guys. Okay, see you in the next video. Enjoy studying with Orhanagon.net.